Vintage Airstreams. So much character, so much potential. And just a small fraction of the cost of new Airstreams. So why does it seem like no one wants to renovate them? Those who try seem to fail badly. The amount of money I've wasted in the vintage Airstream industry. My feet could go all the way through the floor. It is something that I would not recommend anyone do unless you just want to waste a bunch of money. Well, luckily for you guys, I found two idiots willing to try it out. That's me and my husband, Jay. We semi-naively bought an 18-foot 1971 piece of trash. <laughs> I mean, Airstream. Just don't mind the dead bird over there. And we started turning it into our next tiny home on wheels. Things have been going pretty well so far. <laughs> well, for the most part. When we last left you guys, we were able to get the Airstream to our shop. <laughs> Remove the janky air conditioner, which I'm still not convinced was an air conditioner because it looks more like a spaceship. And lifted the shell up so we could completely move the old rotten subfloor. We treated the frame, mounted new fresh water and gray water tanks, and Jay built the subfloor. Now it's finally ready to be put back together. So join us today as we continue our build and start to unknowingly unlock every reason why no one else seems to really be doing this. Does it fit? I give up. I put it on the wrong way. We debated about selling the Airstream. I think the first reason people don't want to restore Airstreams is because of all the specialty tools it requires. Jay and I have a workshop, but still had to go out and purchase a ton of tools. And that adds up quickly. Once you have your tools, you have to figure out what to do with them. All right, it's time to put this under this crooked Airstream shell. From what we've found online, there's not a ton of information out there. Pull your side up. <laughs> a lot of it has to be figured out as you go, and everyone has their own way of doing things. It's a lot of trial and error. Putting the shell back on the Airstream was exactly that for us. You should probably be inside. Actually, you want me to be inside with you and go down with you? Yeah. There may not be many videos out there offering advice on how to put the shell back on the Airstream, so just take this video as a what not to do video. We already fucked up. When I tell you we had no idea what we were doing, I'm not kidding. We sort of jiggled the top up and down, crossed our fingers, and hoped this wouldn't be another situation like when we did our first and only ever bus roof raise back in 2019. We were lifting the top up and down, banging the aluminum like our lives depended on it, and hoped it would fit. And it didn't. We'd get one side in, then the rest would be way off, so we'd have to start all over. Yeah, so I can't write Jay's measurements were just a little bit off, so he's gonna shave off the end here to hopefully this time make a perfect fit. Well, that's gonna take forever. There we go! We spent hours cutting, remeasuring, and singing. Oh, you yes, see it! Oh, yes, you see it! Yeah. Is that part of the song? But nothing seemed to work. You know the situation's pretty dire when I'm the one telling Jay what we should do. I gotta do what? You gotta put your hand on that one. They have to go in at the same time. Yeah, they, they want. There's too much tightness on it. I give up. There's not giving up in this game. Eventually we realized there was a simple explanation for the shell not fitting. Oh, I think that did it. It did it? Oh, so we had cross beams on and it was like holding tension. So that's why we think the holes weren't lining up perfectly, but he took those off and I think that fixed the problem. Now we can sleep. Train. Now we can sleep. Hammer. When you don't know what you're doing, it can become extremely paralyzing and hard to work through that. But we have enough building experience to know that you just have to push through it and accept it's all part of the process. You see it right there? We got one little rivet in. Woo! Gotta celebrate the little wins because we still have probably about a thousand left. It's time to have a riveting day. To put the shell back on, we used a rivet gun and an air compressor. It's a very slow, meticulous process. Okay, you good? Good. With one of us on the outside and one on the inside, Jay had to pre-drill the holes because, well, the shell didn't line perfectly back up. But hey, once we got the hang of it, it honestly wasn't that bad. Another thing that can really slow you down with Airstream restoration is if you're a perfectionist. Jay and I have turned into perfectionists with our van builds. It's our business and we want to offer the highest quality of work. It doesn't look good. An Airstream like this is never going to be perfect. So it's been an adjustment for us having to remember that. 
Hey guys, time to scrape off all this yummy gunk. There were a bunch of holes that needed to be filled up from things that were there before, like the AC spaceship, for example. This was another extremely tedious process, but are you surprised? It required us to cut new aluminum, drill holes, fill them using Clico's fastener kit, and glue it down before adding it to its final resting place, which required another riveting performance from Jay on the outside and me on the inside. And when it was time to get on the flimsy roof, it was a bit of an uncomfortable balancing act. Luckily, Jay's part alien, so he was able to adjust his body accordingly. I'm really not sure how other people do it, though. Also, if you don't have this electric cock gun, get it. Your fingers will thank me later. You like this? Our Airstream lost an eyeball, but he gained an eyebrow. Some things did go kind of smoothly, like adding brake lights. <gasps> But with the Airstream, we seem to struggle with most things, even tackling things we are familiar with. Jay's up there on the roof. He's gonna put the Max Air fan in. A little bit more familiarity for us. It's been a while since we've done something where we're not sure about everything. So it's kind of been a challenge, but it's been a nice challenge. It's good. <laughs> Made some progress today. We needed that. Because we did have a few times where we debated about selling the Airstream. But we're not gonna do that. Jay and I thought our four years of build experience would help us out a little bit, but I don't think having build experience matters much when renovating an Airstream. It doesn't fit. Because no matter how much build experience you have, if you've never worked directly with aluminum before, it's going to be a struggle. So uh, remember when I was saying that we were about to do something normal, Max Air Fan install? That's the Max Air fan install behind me. Jay had to add some wood to it because the like shell of this just caves in really easily. It's like not supported in some places, so we just he had to add some extra support. So that's what you're looking at back there. Max Air fan is in. Fancy Jay work over here. That's why they pay you the big bucks. With Airstream restorations, you're going to find there's a lot of parts that need replacing. I'm filming. So this thing holds all the way to the Airstream and do we even know if it really needs to be replaced or we just... I don't just... know, it's just like 50 years old so I feel good about replacing it. It's the foundation of your home. Yeah. Invest in the foundation. It's rusty, it looks crooked, even though we're not sure how it's supposed to look. It might be right, but we're gonna get a new one. Not only are they expensive, but they can be pretty hard to find. Luckily we found a new axle close by. I can't even move. So a few hours and $1,500 later, it was time to put it on. We'll take the old axle off and put the new one on. I don't think there's that much to it, really. It's kind of fun for me to see that Jamie's actually a normal human being. He's not an alien and he doesn't know everything build-wise. It's probably exciting for you guys too. That's one way to get it off. We felt about as useful as a screen door on a submarine, but we continued forward into the unknown, feeling a little more confident than we should have. Look at that rust. Yum. Oh. Wow. You can hear it. Listen to this. Guys. That's why we're replacing it. <laughs> With some extra muscle, Jay was able to get the old axle off. So scary. But for us, having a strong foundation isn't enough. We want this Airstream to be able to go anywhere. We're gonna use these to lift the Airstream even further. It's gonna go like this. So we're gonna get that much of extra clearance. It's gonna be like three inches. If only it was always that easy to get an extra three inches, right? We got this lift kit for $100 from the same guy who sold us the axle. Absolute legend. From there on out, everything went super smoothly because as you guys know by now, everything with the Airstream always goes 100% according to plan. Not! We put it on the wrong way. <laughs> we put it on the wrong way round. I don't think there's that much to it, really. It's here, it should be there. Aww. Gotta take it off and spit it round. Mm, we have no idea what we're doing. This is fun. <laughs> We're finding most things with the Airstream to be a do once, undo, do again type of situation. It's not a speed we're used to, but it's one that is slowly starting to make some progress. Step into that. Oh my gosh, it's so tall. <laughs> Jeez. 
Are we gonna get this out the door? No, definitely not. It's not gonna fit out. It barely fit on the way in here. Building an Airstream feels a lot like making a pasta sauce. It's a labor of love that shouldn't ever be quick. Like a good pasta sauce, the longer it takes, the better it will be in the end. As we started to plan our layout, we got to visualize our Airstream when it's done and when it's our home. I just feel like there's something so fulfilling about bringing something beautiful back to life that would otherwise be rotting away in a junkyard. What'd you do, Jay? Uh, I got my markers mixed up. <laughs> Restoring a vintage Airstream might not be the route for everyone, but if you're crazy like us and like to make yourself suffer, I think in the end it just might be more worth it than buying a new one. But hey, ask me again tomorrow and maybe I'll change my mind. I know which one I want to do. <laughs>